Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. This is now um, paper four, so the, sorry, pure mathematics P4 paper from the International A Level at Excel um, January 2021 session. And this question here is all about differentiation and a special type of differentiation called implicit differentiation. So here we got to find dy dx in terms of x and y. Now, in order to do that, um, we could attempt to make y the subject of this formula and then find dy dx in the normal traditional way. However, as we have a y squared term and a y term, um, it's going to be a bit difficult to do that. Maybe not impossible, but it's going to be difficult to do that. So the easiest way of dealing with this type of problem is to use what's called implicit differentiation. Okay, and many people don't really understand what implicit differentiation actually is and they just memorize a very simple technique of differentiating and they don't really understand why it is what it is so i'm going to attempt to explain to you how to do it and also explain to you uh, why we get what we do get okay so first of all i'm going to differentiate each term with respect to x so I'm going to differentiate each term with respect to x. I can differentiate every single term separately with respect to x. That's what we actually uh, are doing when we differentiate. You know, so for example, if I have y equals x squared, okay, what we are doing is when we differentiate this whole thing, I'm differentiating y with respect to x, which is dy dx. That's what it means. And I'm differentiating x squared with respect to x, which gives me 2x. Okay, that's what we're doing. We're doing to what's to we're doing to one side of the equation exactly the same as what we're doing to the other. So I'm differentiating this side with respect to x, which gives me dy dx. That's the differential of y with respect to x, by definition. And I'm differentiating this side with respect to x, I get you know two x multiplied by the power. Okay, and take one from the power. So I'm just trying to make you get an understanding. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna differentiate the whole of this side, and I'm going to write a few steps that I won't normally write down. But just to show you, I'm differentiating all of this side with respect to x. So all of this side, 4y squared plus 3x, I'm differentiating this side with respect to x, and I'm differentiating all of this side also with respect to x. Okay, as I said, I don't normally write this step down, but I'm just trying to make you understand where this whole idea comes from of implicit differentiation. Okay, so basically now what I'm going to do is I, I can take these two separate terms and differentiate them separately. So I can differentiate this term with respect to x and this term with respect to x and this term with respect to x, the whole of this term. So I'm going to differentiate all of these things with respect to x. This is a product, so I'm going to do, do something slightly different for this. Okay, now, differentiating this term with respect to x is no problem. Differential of 3x with respect to x is 3. Differentiating this, this term with respect to x, what we're going to do is we're going to use what's called the chain rule. Because y is some sort of function of x. Okay, y is a function of x. So what we're going to do when we differentiate this, I'll differentiate it as I normally would, for example, if I had... For example, if I had, say, 3x plus 2 to the power of 5, how do I differentiate that? I multiply by, by the power, the whole thing, and then take one from the power. So I'm going to multiply by the power, so 2 times 4 is 8, and then I'm going to take one from the power, so that'll be to the power of 1. But then what do I do in the next step of differentiating this? If there's a function inside this thing, if there's a function inside the function, I have to multiply by the differential of that function. So I have to multiply by the 3. Now, there is a function inside this function. Let me just, it looks like a dash, it's not supposed to be a dash, it's supposed to be a 1, but I'll, just, I'll take get rid of it. The function is y. y is a function of x. What is the differential of y? Well, it's dy dx, so I have to write here dy dx. That, as I said, becomes 3. Now, here I have a product of two separate functions. So I have to use the product rule to differentiate this. So I'm going to just do that on the, on the side. I'll have u equals 6y and v equals e to the power of minus 2x. When I differentiate 6y with respect to x, I'm going to get 6, and then if I differentiate 6y, I'm going to get 6. Then I have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, so I have to multiply by dy dx. 
And for V, well, this is going to stay the same. E to the power of minus 2x, it doesn't change. But then I multiply by minus 2. Let me give myself some more space there. I have to use the chain rule again, all right, to, to differentiate this. So E to the power of minus 2x, when you differentiate E to the power of something, it stays as it is. So this is going to be E to the power of minus 2x as it is. But they have to multiply it by the differential of what's inside the function, which is minus 2. Not minus 2x, minus 2. Okay, so using the uh, product rule, I'll multiply these two together, which gives me 6 times e to the power of minus 2x dy dx. I multiply these two together, um, so I, I add them, it's a product rule, so we're going to have plus, and there'll be a minus now. 6 times 2 is 12, uh, y e to the power of minus 2x. Okay, now I have differentiated um, every single term with respect to x, now I have to find dy dx. So I have to make dy dx the subject of this and express it as, the, as a subject of this. So I'm going to bring the dy dx terms together on one side. So on this side I have 8y dy dx and I will bring this on this side, so minus 6e to the power of minus 2x dy dx and I'll get rid of all the non-x um, x squared terms, uh, sorry, dy dx terms to the other side. So this is going to be minus 3 minus 12y e to the power of minus 2x. I can take out dy dx as a common factor. So I have dy dx and I have 8y minus 6e to the power of minus 2x. That's the x there. Okay, and that's equal to minus 3 minus 12y e to the power of minus 2x. So now I can say dy dx is equal to minus 3 minus 12y e to the power of minus 2x over 8y minus 6e to the power of minus 2x. And that's our answer. I've differentiated y with respect to x using implicit differentiation. So you see dy dx comes out in terms of x and y, not just in terms of x, in terms of x and y. So there's the answer to part A. Now, okay, now for part B. The curve crosses the y-axis at the origin and at the point P. Find the equation of the normal to the curve at P, writing your answer in the form y equals mx plus c, where m and c are constants to be found. Okay, so here's the equation of the curve, and here's the, the gradient function that we found, dy dx, in terms of x and y. Now what we need to do here is we need to find the equation of the normal to the curve at the point P. So we need two things. We need to know, one of the things we need to know is what is what are the coordinates of the point P? Okay, so I need to I need, I need to know the coordinates of the point P. Now P is, um, okay, P is um, the y, the place where the curve crosses the y-axis. So P is when x equals zero. Okay, the y-coordinate of P, which I have to find, is when x equals zero. All right, so that that's what I have to find here. That's one of the things we'll have to find. The second thing we're supposed to know when we find the the equation of a straight line, a normal is a is a, a line which has a gradient. It's a straight line has a gradient perpendicular to the curve at that point. So it's a straight line. So we need to know its gradient. We need to know the gradient of the normal to the curve at p. Okay, so if we know the point and the gradient of the of the line at that point, we can find the equation of that line. That's all we need to know. All right, two things. Okay, so now <clears throat> what I need to do here is first of all find the coordinates of the point P. So I need to find the y coordinate of P. So we know at P, as I said, x equals zero. So we can use this equation here, which is four y squared plus three x equals 6y um, times e to the power of minus 2x to find the coordinates of y when x equals 0. So when x equals 0, you're going to have 4y squared plus 0, okay, plus 0, 3 times 0, equals 6 times y times e to the power of minus 2 times 0, which is 0. So we end up with this equation 4y squared equals 6y. If I divide by 2, I'm going to get 2y squared equals 3y. 
If I bring everything on one side, 2y squared minus 3y equals 0. Common factor is y. I've got 2y minus 3 equals 0. So now I can say that either y equals 0, which is one of the points that we have been told at the origin, and the other point is when y equals 3 over 2. Okay, 2y equals 3, y equals 3 over 2. That is what I'm looking for. That is the y coordinate of p. So I can say p is equal to 0 and 3 over 2. Okay, so now I know this, I have to now find the gradient of the normal to the curve. So what I can find, I know, I know dy dx in terms of x and y is given by this minus 3, minus 12, y e to the power of minus 2x over 8y minus 6 e to the power of minus 2x. So I know that's the gradient of the curve. And I know that the point p, as we said, was 0, 3 over 2. So if I substitute these values of x and y into this, I will find the gradient of the tangent. So the gradient of the tangent to the curve will be the same as the gradient of the curve. It's going to be given by putting x as 0 and y as 3 over 2 into this expression here for the gradient. So you've got minus 3, minus 12 times, now y is 3 over 2, so 12 times 3 over 2, okay, times e to the power of minus 2 times 0, which is 0, over 8 times y, which is 8 times 3 over 2, minus 6 times e to the power of, again, 0. Okay, so now that will give us minus 3, and this is going to be minus, that, that count, that e to the power of one, 0 becomes 1. That becomes 6. 6 times 2 is 18. So it's minus 18 over, and I have this cancel with that, gives you with, that leaves you with 4 times 3, which is 12, minus, and e to the power of 0 is 1, so it's 12 minus 6. So you're left with the gradient of the tangent to the curve is going to be minus 21 over 12 minus 6, which is 6. Okay, uh, 3 goes into both of these, don't they? This is going to be 20, this is going to be minus 7 over 2. So the gradient of the tangent is minus 7 over 2. And the gradient of the normal, which is perpendicular to the tangent, is going to be its negative reciprocal. So you change the sign, it becomes positive, and you turn it upside down, reciprocal, 2 over 7. The gradient of the perpendicular lines, will the products will always be equal to minus 1. If I multiply 2 7 by minus 7 over 2, I get minus 1. So this is the gradient of the... Um, normal. I know this is the y-intercept, so I can write it straight away, y equals 2 over 7x, because we've got y equals mx plus c, and c is the y-intercept, which is 3 over 2, so y equals 2 over 7x plus 3 over 2, and there we have the answer, the gradient of the normal to the curve at that point p. Okay, so this was directly the y-intercept, so I didn't have to do any calculation to find what c is or use the other formula y minus y1 equals x m times x minus x1. It's much easier to use this when you know the y intercept already. So there's the answer to that question. Um, anything else that they want me to do here? No. Nope. m and c are constants to be found. Okay, so we could, if you want to, just be a bit extra and say m is equal to 2 over 7 and c is equal to 3 over 2. Okay, so there we have the answer to question number six which is about implicit differentiation and its impl um, implications or its application sorry the uh, other questions from this paper the p4 january um, 2021 paper will be found in this um, playlist over here you'll see a link to it appearing soon over here other questions from implicit differentiation in this playlist over here and you can click on the uh, link here to to get to subscribe to my channel and on the top of the page you'll see a card taking you to other p4 papers you might want to watch okay so that's the end of that question thank you very much for watching and um, i hope to see you soon